Hey, we're gonna go through through um, a Apache Spark with Kinesis example. This screencast is meant to accompany a tutorial, a written tutorial that where I describe the code and the steps that we're about to take. But I thought it might be helpful to have a screencast that goes through all the steps. So we're gonna cover some of the Kinesis setup in AWS, and then we're gonna go over this data generator and how you can set that up and send some fake data to your Kinesis stream. And then we'll actually run through the example code and, and run it in IntelliJ. So um, let me start by saying this is just one way to do it. Um, there's probably other ways to do it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments wherever you're seeing this, or you know if you've got suggestions on how I can improve what I'm doing here, let me know that as well. So what we're gonna cover here is we'll start by setting up Kinesis. And what I've done is that on the screen here, um, I'm looking at my screen right here, um, is I've logged into AWS, and I'm gonna show you how I created a Kinesis stream. If you go to services, Kinesis is right here. Click that, it will come to a welcome screen. And then if you go to the streams console, you can click this blue button, button here called create Kinesis stream. Now, I created just the default one, and the example, example I'm gonna use WM2, and it just has one shard here, and then everything else was the default. So if I would do this again for the first time, I'd create Kinesis Stream, I would name it something. I'd create just one shard. I don't need anything big for this example, then hit Create Kinesis Stream, it's that simple. After you do that though, you need to apply some security policies to it so you're able to actually connect to it. Let's take a look at that. So go into IAM, wherever that's here in Security and, Pli and Compliance, I have it open recently, go into there and I'll just show you the user that I set up it's this Westem user and it has API full access. That's well, that's the group. If you go into it and you see the security credentials, you'll see the key and everything's like that, which I'm not gonna show you, but in the permissions, you'll see that I've, I've given it a lot. Um, it's given it full access to Kinesis. Kinesis does some checkpointing by default to Dynamo, so you need to give that access to Dynamo as well. And then I added a couple of other here to App Stream. I'm not even sure if I need that actually. I'm not sure if you need the, the CloudWatch part, but I assume you do because of the monitoring that you can see in Kinesis. I'll go back there to show you. Anyhow, long story short is that I know I've probably given way too much policies here just to be able to read from a Kinesis stream, but I didn't, I just wanted to get an example working, so I just set this all up. If I was going to production with this example, I'd come back and remove everything that I didn't need. I mentioned Kinesis and CloudWatch. I think it might be worth it to go back there real quick. If you go to Kinesis, Stream Console, WM2, there's this monitoring part, and I'm assuming this is all CloudWatch. You can see the events that have come through here. So that's why that's needed. I think that about does it. I'm in the Oregon region. We're gonna come back to that later on why that matters. So this was the Kinesis setup. The other part of, of just setting this all up before we can even run any of the code is this Kinesis data generator. And I've included a link on in the bottom of the tutorial where this video should be. And that link here takes us to this Amazon Kinesis data generator which just like it sounds it makes it easy to send data to kinesis streams it's pretty cool it uses this faker library so you can have dynamically generated data which we'll see um, in order to set that up just click this cognito user with cloud formation button and it will take you to the your console and it, by default, it puts us in US West 2 in this Oregon region. Again, I'll come back to this in a second. And just proceed to click next through these screens. Just accept all the defaults. 
you'll get to one screen eventually. I'll let me click of it that you need to put in these parameters, username and password. Remember that. Just put whatever you want and remember it, and then continue to go through the next screens to create that user. I'm gonna cancel out of it now because I've already gone through and done the steps as outlined in this page, you'll need to do the same thing. When you're finished, you'll have this stack name from CloudFormation. Let me back out of it entirely because this process takes about 15 minutes or it took, took when I did it about 15 minutes. Um, so let's say you were starting it and, and it wasn't complete and how would you ever get back into here? Well, in AWS again, um, you would go to cloud formation and in cloud formation you would see this you'd click that button go to outputs and it would give you the URL where you need to go to let's go there now It'll pop up a new tab to access this kinesis data generator with me so far next you log in with the username and password that you created that's all up to you and then you'll be in this data generator screen so I've already got something set up here for us and we're gonna when we actually run it I'll come back here and, and run this but for now with the subject of just being on setup before we run I, we won't get into this now let me go back to cloud formation for a second because one of the things that I found troublesome when I was setting all this up is by default my region was in US East so when I would come into Northern Virginia or US East and I'd go to cloud formation, I'd see nothing. I'd see no stack that I created from this Kinesis data generator. And that kind of messed me up a little bit. Maybe, I'm guessing you're probably smarter than me, um, so this won't be an issue for you. But if you, app, if you see this, and it is confusing, by default this Kinesis data generator puts it in, as I said, U.S. West Oregon. So if you come back to that, you'll see it. Your mileage may vary, but that was one thing that screwed me up. So with all this, we've got the Kinesis set up. We've got a data generator set up that we can send some fake data to our Kinesis stream. Now we're at the point where we can actually start to consider running this code. So I have this code up in IntelliJ. I've tried to... Uh, Actually, this is the SBT file, which we can cover. Uh, I've tried to blow up the, the font a little bit so it's easier for you all to read. But if you have any questions or concerns about reading it or even suggestions on how I can make this font bigger and better for you, let me know. Um, there's also other tutorials you know, um, on this site where you can learn more about how I particularly set up IntelliJ to run. I like to be able to run it in IntelliJ so I can have a feedback loop that happens pretty quickly versus you know, building a jar and deploying it into your Spark cluster. Um, that just takes longer than I've got the patience for. So I wanna run it in IntelliJ um, and, and go quickly in order to prove out the code that I'm running. Or writing and running. So how do you do that in IntelliJ? Let's go through one way to do it and that's this. I have in the left hand side here, hopefully you see the my mouse if I over here. If I right click on the Spark Kinesis example and hit run, up here we're going to see um, Spark Kinesis example 2 and down in the console we're gonna see that it's failing. So I'm gonna stop this. It's failing because the class has not found Spark Session. So how do we resolve that? Well, let me show you. If you go up here, in the up top right here, I'm shaking it so the pointer gets big. If you go into Edit Configurations, the problem is, is that here, Shake, 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 shake. Come on, mouse. Right there <laughs> is using the Spark 2 streaming, the name of this project's class path. If you change this to IntelliJ Runner, apply it, hit OK, and then try running it again, it will work. So I'm going to stop that for now. 
I'm going to clear it. We'll come back to this. I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. These are just examples that I don't want around. I like to keep things tidy. So you might be running. What's where's that IntelliJ runner class path coming from? If you haven't seen the other tutorials on how I set up IntelliJ, it's from here, the build SBT. Um, I set up um, this IntelliJ runner, or more in particular here, to have um, a particular class path with the Scholar version and then the, the dependencies of both the Spark dependencies, but I'm going to change that, that instead of, that I want it only in compile, and then other dependencies rather than assembly, including it in the jar, and then other dependencies here are jars that I want to include when I build a jar. Now let me try that again, and then I will show that again. And then the default library dependencies, you'll see, are provided versus compile here. So why the two different things? Why IntelliJ Runner and then the default in, uh, library dependencies? When I build a jar with assembly, so in IntelliJ you can do that here, should be under tasks. There's this assembly here, which I'll run now, and it will build this jar. Um, when I build that jar to deploy in Spark, I don't want to include um, these things here in Spark dependencies because they'll already be present in my Spark cluster. Um, this one, this caveat on the Spark Cassandra connector depends. It may or may not be included in the Spark cluster that you're running it on. I don't want to include those in the jar that I'm using to deploy. But I do need these jars available when I run it in IntelliJ. See what I did there? So in IntelliJ, I want to include it in the compile and when I'm running it. But when I build this jar, I don't. So I need the, the separation there. So I create this IntelliJ runner here. And it can be named, excuse me, whatever you want. And then I use the library dependencies here for when I'm actually building the assembly plugin. So I've included some links in this SBT file as well. And if I haven't mentioned it already, all of this code is available from my GitHub repo, also included in the resources section of wherever you happen to be um, watching this video. So the video, and if you're watching it on YouTube, um, there should be a link that takes you to um, the, the written tutorial about this, and that has a resources section that includes a link to the source code. Wow, I've been talking a lot. Any questions so far? None? Okay, let's keep going then. So we've set up Kinesis, we've done the Kinesis data generator, we've gone over the code and IntelliJ and how to run it. Let's run it and start sending some data to our Kinesis stream. I'm going to disconnect that SBT console. I've got this Spark Kinesis example all teed up, so I'm just going to hit run. We'll see it down here. Let's see if I can blow it up a little bit for you. Sensors with temp. And now we're starting to output some results that's happening every two seconds. We're not seeing anything yet because our Kinesis stream doesn't have anything in it. And where do we have the pickup point? Just looking at this code up here, we're just getting from the latest. You can see that I'm gonna go quickly and try to make that pointer big. So the initial position in the stream is latest. We could change that. I'm not gonna do that now. Oop, keyboard issue, we could do it to trim horizon too if we want, but we're not gonna do that now. So we're ready to send some data. Um, as we go back to cloud formation, if we go into output, we'll go to that URL. I'll log in with the username and password that I created when we went through that template. I have something set up already for this Faker library. It has, for the sensor ID of just first name, it doesn't really matter, it's just a string. Then a range of random numbers between 10 and 550, a random element of okay, fail, and warn. 
I modified some of the examples here that they provide and just combined it into our example. Nothing secret there. If you choose your particular region, US West 2, you'll see your screen, your stream updated with WM2. I'm gonna send 100 records per second and I can test it. So this is an example of what the records I'll be sending look like. And we're ready to go. So I'm gonna start sending some data and you'll see 100 records, etc. I'm gonna come back to IntelliJ and I'm starting to see results like sensor data coming in and then we have a window operation where we're determining the, the tough the highest two um, sensors over the last what was it 20 seconds or so yeah the last 20 seconds here so we're actually we're seeing results down here and it is working so that's it um, we're running an IntelliJ and we have actually we've built a jar if we wanted to deploy it we could do that too um, I think that's about covers it when you're done if you're just doing this for fun or just to get started remember that you are going to be charged in AWS I'm just gonna stop this so go back stop sending data to it go back to your AWS console you might want to delete that stream you might want to go into Dynamo and um, delete the tables that are being used for checkpointing so you don't get charged. Again, it's going to be pretty cheap. I don't know what it is exactly, but it's not, you know, hundreds of dollars or even tens of dollars. I think this is just in the one or two dollar range or one or two euro or rupees. It's um, wherever you might be watching this yen, um, Deutschmarks. Uh, you know, whatever you use for money. So um, here we are. Uh, that I think that's about it, guys. So um, we ran through. We did a lot there. This is a long video, so I'm going to sign off. But let me know if you have any questions or ideas for improvements. Hope this helps. Have a great day. Bye.